six hours at midnight tonight, all businesses other than essential businesses and government functions are required to cease all operations in the majority of the Bay Area. Alameda, Contra Costa, Marin, San Francisco, San Mateo, and Santa Clara County. What we are asking for everyone to do is to remain at home for all but the most essential outings for your safety and the safety of those around you. I think when the shelter in place order was announced, I think people were finally like, whoa, this is like a, a serious thing. Oh yeah, yeah, this is real. Oh my gosh, like this is like actually happening. The level of anxiety is really high. Well, staying inside is, is, is for sure, you know, something that needs to be done. perspective like I have been preparing for this probably for about four to six weeks. Andre Ramos, a uh, local pediatrician, uh, Oakland, California. Uh, and so it's just been challenging to see this preparedness from where, you know where I am and, and the people I work with and the sort of lagging uh, response or discordant response, you know, you know, and I, I've been very proud of, you know, our local, you know, and coordinated uh, Bay Area and state governments uh, because they they had to sort of be the cutting edge and say, you know, even though other people don't seem to be concerned or affected, you know, we're going to be the model. Um, well, having a wife who works in labor and delivery, I knew it was serious from the get go. My name is Nate Berry. I live out here in, uh, in Bay Point. I'm a personal trainer at Berry's Boot Camp in San Francisco. We actually had a call um, letting us know that we were, you know, going to be cutting the class size in half. Um, that way to limit the amount of crossing of people from different uh, equipment. And there would be cleaning going on in between uh, at the halfway point of the session um, just to keep the place clean. But they were already doing cleaning at the end of every session. So we were already, you know, deeply sanitizing our areas. But as the situation progressed, they were like, um, they did a voluntary shutdown, I think, before places were forced to shut down. It was weird. We normally do our normal Costco run like every two months, and we had just wanted to go in and do our normal shopping, and it was like a zoo in there. People rushing to get paper towels and toilet paper and stuff like that. Yeah, so um, Academic Coffee, we're a micro roastery, and we also have a little cafe and catering operation um, in downtown San Jose. We, we've been following this you know, pretty closely. I'm in the shop every single day also. And my biggest concern is, is getting sick because then one, I can't work. And then two, you know, I've got a newborn baby and I need to keep her safe too. Over two weeks ago already, I, I have these regular team meetings with my, my staff. And I said, hey, you know what? There's this thing happening right now. And I'm keeping a close eye on it, but we've got a few cases in Santa Clara County. And then as I saw the cases, um, you know, started to increase, you know, we started making policies like no reusable cups, you know, everything is single use only. Customers don't touch any products. Like for example, lids, cups, stirs, milks, everything is kept behind on the barista side. As the cases started escalating, I was thinking about our team and, and how we take care of them. And I said, hey, you know what? Let's just plan to remove the seating in our cafe and just do, you know, just all takeout only. And so we made that move and then all of a sudden, you know, within 24 hours, we saw the shelter in place uh, announcement being made. Other than being close to this guy and petting a few dogs that are irresistible, we really are trying to keep something of a distance now, which is, which is new. I mean, it's, it's new now. I'm David Wolfson. Paula Bessler. I am a retired Kaiser pharmacist. I recently retired, so this is uh, this experience is my second week of retirement. We're doing fine so far. It's um, soon enough in the process that it's almost more a game than um, anything that's serious. We're overstocked. I have right cookie now, dough for 
the ages. That's what we'll be eating when we get through all of the all of the pasta and enchilada sauce. I haven't really felt I've been affected by this as much as people with kids or. Oh. Absolutely. Um, now we're the old people and people in the neighborhood. I mean, they're so cute. They're they're sending little texts if you need anything. I mean, we really are the grandparents. We need to adjust our photo album of ourselves because, yeah, we're old folks to other people. I guess I have, I am unrealistically optimistic about my personal experience. It is so much easier to be retired with a pension than to be a real working person with kids. Kirsten Hernandez, part-time educational consultant, mom of three, Oakland, California. Since Monday, Andre has been working regular. In fact, Monday was like a 12 hour shift. So our first day of home together was, uh, was a long one. Um, but we're doing just a couple learning activities arts and crafts, trying to get out for a daily walk. Kirsten sends me pictures, you know, I think she's really trying to give the kids a sense of routine, a sense of what to expect, because this is really disruptive for them. So we got up early at the first one this morning and she got dressed. We sometimes on a Saturday morning, we'll take the kids, you know, if someone gets up early, they want to surprise the rest of the family by going to get panguse or donuts. And so Zoe got up this morning, was dressed, ready to go. She's like, mommy, let's go. I'm like, oh, yeah, we can't go. We just, we can't go to get pan dulce. We can't go to get donuts today. Sorry. It's hard to explain to a seven-year-old that pan dulce is, not a, is a non-essential service. <laughs> I know a lot of my friends who are trying to work from home with the kids at home, it's just, it's it's so stressful. It, it, everyone feels like nothing's getting done well. Like I'm on this two hour call for work and the kids are going crazy or I'm trying to teach my kids and I'm not, you know, then I'm having to stay up late to finish the work that I didn't do. I, I'm an outpatient pediatrician, so I don't I don't do hospital work anymore. I do have colleagues that are hospitalists, um, but it, there is a sort of cascading effect. Uh, and so the way we're anticipating this is going to happen is that um, the ER is going to be inundated with coronavirus patients, but also somebody may have a heart attack or a stroke or another acute event at the same time. We're already making plans to have uh, people work around the clock, you know, in shifts uh, to stretch. You know, I haven't done uh, splints and you know things like that in the ER for a long time. So I'm gonna have to sort of get trained again so that I can take those patients off, those things that really could be handled in the outpatient um, so that, you know, the ER docs can focus on the most urgent patients. Because of this free time, I've actually been like doing some studying for my AP exams that are supposed to be in May. I don't know if they're still happening. My name is Kendall Jensen, and I live in Brentwood, California, and I'm a senior at Heritage High School. So actually, um, right now I was supposed to be um, touring a bunch of colleges, um, but they all those tours got canceled because the campuses shut them down. It stinks because we're supposed to make a decision by May 1st. That's very like frustrating for a lot of seniors because um, being there and being up on the campus and seeing everything is like kind of your make or break. People like my age, we're just, you know, we're, we're just scared because it's almost like our whole lives we've been like, oh, okay, high school, college, like, here you go. And it's like, everything's kind of like frozen, like, it's like, we might not even finish our last quarter of high school. So I think we're just all like really scared about our futures and like what's gonna happen. And I think it's affecting everyone that they're not able to um, experience some of their last senior festivities. Like for example, my prom, our prom is probably canceled. So it's, it's tough because you're like, well, what do you do now? You spent the, $400 on a dress that you probably can't even really wear. So what's gonna happen? A lot of my friends are um, obviously very outraged and upset, um, but I also think that they're thinking the same way that this is happening um, to keep us safe. But um, it's, it's, it's like a push and pull because you want to make sure that you're keeping everyone else safe, but also you've worked so hard for four years and you've you know, so many long nights and um, so much hard work to just kind of like lose everything. It's just everything, you know, that we've been looking forward to is 
just been ripped from our fingers and there's nothing we can do about it. So I think it's hard and um, a lot of people have just mixed emotions, but yeah, it's it's tough. I probably haven't slept in the past two nights because um, cause we're, we're making so many changes to the business every single day. You know, we're trying to be ahead of this any way possible. Um, even right now, our transactions in the cafe are completely touchless now. We've also put in place measures like, um, <laughs> in the cafe we joke and call it black glove service, but uh, we have gloves in every single size for every single employee, and we all wear gloves throughout the entire workday. We're staying positive. I think I think our team is staying positive, partly because we, I think we're probably one of the few businesses that we haven't cut any hours and uh, we haven't laid anybody off yet either. I think if we just get a little bit of income coming in, then we'll, you know, I can just <laughs> keep on racking up those uh, credit card fees. But my main goal right now is to keep everybody employed, but keep everyone employed safely. And honestly, you know, our, our, our super regulars are, are keeping us alive right now. It's like, sometimes I get emotional because like a lot of them have been there since the day that we opened. They're only coming in like once a week right now. They'll come in and be like, hey, let me get this uh, cup of coffee. I'm gonna buy some beans to take home. And you know what? I'm just gonna buy a tote bag for my groceries. And then all of a sudden that's like, you know, 30, 40 bucks that will, help us pay for that day's wages. The support that we have from the community is just, it's just, it, it really is amazing. Like, I, I just can't believe it. Um, and, and, and we're all thankful for them. NBA 2K20 and Call of Duty have been my best friend, <laughs> helping pass the time. And what I've been doing is I've been on Instagram and Facebook, you know, doing workouts. It's not even to get paid, but it's to help people just keep their sanity while at home. But at the end of each workout, I do say, you know, if you can donate, if you can't, it's fine. I'm still gonna, be, I'm still gonna keep doing what I'm doing. Uh, the support from these people is, it, it's, I, it doesn't make sense. Like it's, it's unreal. The support from, um, and these people are watching multiple instructors and and potentially donating to different instructors throughout the day. Um, so the support from them is just unbelievable. Like I'm, it, I, it's hard to wrap my head around it. Thing for us right now is because my wife's also pregnant. She actually just started her third trimester. You know, we want to start stacking up stuff for the baby, maybe wipes and diapers and stuff like that. We had a baby shower planned on April 26th um, that we, you know, may have to cancel or, or postpone. Plans where we had a pretty large baby shower. Um, I think it was like 130 people. Uh, we had food set up and a friend was gonna DJ, another friend was doing decoration. So a lot of friends that were helping out with the event. Um, so I had to have to probably pull that, you know, back. It sucks, but you know, it's just, you know, we're not the only ones suffering out here with, with plans we probably had, you know? So we've been engaged for actually about a full, about a year. So we got engaged last year around this time. We were in Japan. And we kind of started planning like right off the bat and we wanted to have it um, in the spring and things just kind of fell into place. So in terms of planning for our wedding, we found a venue um, and they had a specific date open. And so we were like, yeah, that looks great. Well, let's just do it. And everything really, really worked out really seamlessly until <laughs> I would say the last two weeks. And so now we are working on rescheduling. I've been on multiple calls daily with our planner, with our event coordinator to figure out what the solution is. And we're finding a solution, but it's not ideal. And it's a lot of moving parts, but I think that everyone so far has been really accommodating and um, very helpful just because this is uncharted territories that we're having to navigate right now. And so everyone just really wants to support one another. I think the plan at the moment is to go forward and just find a new date with the same location. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate because we, both my fiance and I come from very big families and they all want to come and celebrate. And so many, so much money has already been spent in deposits and first payments, some of them second payments that 
to us, I mean, at this point, it just, we might as well just keep moving forward. I guess we could, if we wanted to fight and get all our money back and have, have some, some, something small, but, um, I don't know if that's really in the cards for us. You know, I, I worry about our neighbors. Um, and by neighbors, I mean our, our fellow small businesses. You know, we, we might not all make it. You know, I mainly, I mainly worry about people in the service industry because I think, I think they're probably gonna have the most difficult time to, to recover from all of this. I think the whole potential martial law thing is, I think that's the thing that's really racking around people's brains from what I've just talked with other friends and stuff like that. I think that's the thing that's really kind of got people on edge a little bit. My grandma actually, um, she is living alone right now in um, Los Altos. And then my other grandma, she lives in um, Beth on Bethel Island and she lives alone as well. And so I think it's just really scary. My mother's 93. It would possibly be the end if she got a sustained, a severe infection. My son getting sick. Uh, he has a chronic kidney disease, so his medication makes him immunosuppressed. I, I was listening to NPR one day, and the kids never, they're always like, well, it's so boring, mommy change it. Like, I feel like they never really listen to it. It's like background noise to them. But they happened to hear a couple weeks ago, and this was, you know, yeah, two, maybe three weeks ago, where they were talking about what San Francisco was doing. They mentioned people with lung disease or kidney disease, and he heard that. Oh, that was rough. And then, you know, again, knowing that my husband is, is, you know, he will say not on the front lines because he's not, you know, working in the hospital, but it's pretty close behind. And so whether that's, you know, him and or him bringing it home, I think that's what scares me. This is a time to realize that, you know, I'm providing a service. I'm trying to, like, think of the people that I'm serving and, and uh, you know, I can try to control my hand washing, I can control my distance, uh, my protection, um, and, and, but, you know, you know, we hug our kids, we play with our kids, and, uh, you know, I think things will get really different um, if he goes into relapse and he starts to get on the medication and he's clearly immunosuppressed. I think that I'll, I'll have to act differently. I, I think that um, I would tell myself to take care of myself. That everything's supposed to happen for a reason, that what's going on is, um, it, it's hard, but um, that we'll get through it and um, just try to stay positive. Get that plan B in action. That's probably the message. Get some hand sanitizer and get, get a plan B in action. Buy diapers and baby wipes and more protein powder. That's about it. You know, I would say, hey, everything that you're thinking right now, multiply that by 10 because, because the storm that you thought was coming, it's, it's going to come. And a month from now, um, gosh, I hope things get better. <laughs> but I, I'm really not sure because um, if things don't, then everything will for surely be canceled for that I've had planned for years and years, so. Month from now, we're gonna be easing back into normal life. You know, everyone's kind of gonna get back. If you work for a major tech company and stuff like that, their wheels are still kind of turning, but people who own privately owned businesses, I think that's gonna be the interesting thing we're gonna hear a lot about after this is the hit that smaller companies have taken as we kind of creep back into normal life. Well, if you'd like to check back, we'll see yeah. how if our optimism was unwarranted, if our personal optimism was unwarranted. Or pessimism is the case, maybe. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I guess what you're asking us to do is speak the unspeakable because, because it's back there, but I can't give it words. I can't, I can't give it words, but uh, yeah, occasionally when uh, my little pretend bubble bursts it could it could be absolutely horrifying <laughs>